Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Friends jokes that will never get old. For this list, we're looking at some of the best moments from this sitcom that still make us laugh after all these years. Which Friends character do you think makes the best jokes? Did we feature him or her enough here? Number 20. Chandler's Advice We may have to repopulate the Earth. <laughs> and condoms are the way to do that. Chandler's sarcasm is one of the most consistent features of the show. And I just want a million dollars! Whether he's reminding Joey of how babies are made, or wishing for a million dollars after Rachel first comes into Central Perk in the pilot, his characterization remains reliable in all ten seasons. So I thought Joey and I would be okay once we hung out, but it's like we don't even know how to be with each other anymore. I know it's tough now, but things will get better. He's very aware of how prominent this personality trait is, and references it himself later in the show when Rachel comes to him looking for advice. And he delivers this iconic line. I'm not great at the advice. Can I interest you in a sarcastic comment? <laughs> at least he's self-aware. Maybe she should try Ross or Monica next time. Number 19. Rachel Revealing Ross's Secret one of the show's most iconic episodes is the season 4 premiere when Ross and Rachel reconcile after he fails to read her letter and inadvertently admits fault in their breakup. I just wish we hadn't lost those four months. But if time was what you needed just to gain a little perspective... <laughs> we were on the break! Their reunion is short-lived, however, because as soon as Rachel realizes what has happened, she loses it. So does Ross, though. Ross and Rachel's fights are always epic, and this is truly one for the books. Oh, oh, oh. and by the way, Y-O-U apostrophe R-E means you are. Y-O-U-R means your. <laughs> As they hurl insults at each other, their jabs get nastier and nastier. Rachel tries to get the last word in with this reveal. And hey, just so you know, it's not that common. It doesn't happen to every guy, and it is a big deal! It inevitably left many fans speculating about what exactly she's talking about. Number 18. Chandler's Ad Ideas Chandler's job is a near-constant joke throughout the series, and the more we learn about it, the more depressing it seems. No, I mean, what am I supposed to do with myself? You're supposed to find your passion in life. You can be whatever you want to be now. He clearly does not have a passion for the industry he's in, so in Season 9 he decides to embark on a new career in advertising. Cheese. It's milk that you chew. <laughs> when he tries out his chops coming up with promotional slogans for inanimate objects around the apartment, Monica's understandably skeptical, but manages to hook him up with an internship anyway. A grape, because who can get a watermelon in your mouth? <laughs> We're not sure anyone would hire him based on concepts like cheese, it's milk that you chew, but he gets an A for effort. Number 17. The Juice Box There are plenty of Friends jokes that we didn't understand when the show initially aired that have a whole new meaning now that we're all grown up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry this is taking so long. You know, I... I it's no. just it's longer than I expected. We will have dinner, it's okay? It's okay. It's fine. Carl! <laughs> In this episode, Ross and Rachel encounter obstacles when they're trying to plan their date, and eventually end up cozied up in the planetarium at Ross's museum. As they make out while lying on a blanket together, something happens that makes Rachel reassure Ross that it's okay. Oh, God! Oh, honey. Oh, that's okay. What? Oh, no, you just rolled over the juice box. He replies that they actually just rolled over a juice box, and the result is one of the most adult jokes to ever occur on the show. Oh, thank God! <laughs> <laughs> Number 16. Unagi. Unagi is a state of total awareness. When Rachel and Phoebe enroll in a self-defense class, Ross tries to undermine their newfound confidence in their own safety by telling them that they'll never be truly safe without practicing unagi. Ooh, you know what? If we made reservations, we could have unagi in about a half hour. <laughs> you know what? They, of course, make fun of him, asking if he's talking about a kind of sushi. And he subsequently spends the episode trying to scare them. 
Danger! Ah, danger! <laughs> what the hell was that? A lesson in the importance of unagi. <laughs> the girls end up winning this battle, however, with Ross eventually going to see their self-defense teacher and coming off like a total weirdo who's trying to learn how to attack women. Maybe we could attack them together. <laughs> that, that's a no. Number 15, Ross's Sandwich. This is all just because of a sandwich. <laughs> A sandwich? In season five, Ross is dealing with some rage issues due to his divorce and eviction. It all comes to a head when one of his co-workers steals his sandwich. Look, I am 30 years old, okay? I'm gonna be divorced twice and I just got evicted. That sandwich was the only good thing going on in my life. And it's not just any sandwich. It's the special Thanksgiving leftover sandwich featuring the moist maker. You ate my sandwich? I, it was a simple mistake. It could happen to anyone. Oh, really? Clearly, his anger over the sandwich is representative over the frustration he's feeling about his entire life. But it's still hilarious when he realizes that his boss was the one who took it and had the gall to throw part of it away, causing Ross to scream so loud that the pigeons outside hear it. Well, it was quite large. I, 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 I had to throw most of it away. You, 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 you threw my sandwich away. My sandwich! My sandwich! Number 14. Joey doesn't share food. For many of us, Joey is the most relatable of the Friends gang, and one of his qualities that makes us identify with him most is his love of food. In the show's final season, he's dating Phoebe's friend Sarah, but their dinner out takes a negative turn when she tries to eat some of his fries. Describing the date to Phoebe, he yells this now iconic line, Joey doesn't share food! When he agrees to another date, he ends up having to explain to Sarah as well that he does not share food when, despite his best efforts, she always wants to eat from his plate. I don't like it when people take food off of my plate, okay? But you just said what's mine is yours. Well, I didn't mean it! <laughs> he does, however, get a taste of his own medicine when she opts not to share her dessert with him. Stop staring at me. <laughs> Number 13, Ross's trip to the sun. When Monica gets a spray tan, Ross becomes jealous of her newly bronzed skin and decides to try it himself. When the spraying stops, count to five. Unfortunately, however, the tanning process is a little bit too complicated for him. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. <laughs> because he counts Mississippi, he ends up being sprayed multiple times on his front rather than on his back, too. When he goes back to try to rectify the situation, he only manages to make it worse. Wait, wait a minute, there's no light on the back wall. How do I know when it's going to start? Hello? <laughs> Though the entire storyline is hilarious, Chandler gets in the best joke of the episode with this quip. I went to that tanning place your wife suggested. Was that place the sun? <laughs> Number 12, where should we get coffee? Wow. I know. Seems smaller somehow. Of course, Friends had to end with one final joke. In the series finale, we see the group of besties leaving the apartment for the last time. This is harder than I thought it would be. Yeah, it's gonna be okay. It's a tear-filled scene for both the characters and the audience, but Chandler cuts the tension in just the way fans would expect. When Rachel asks if Monica and Chandler have time to go for a coffee before they head to their new house, Chandler quippily responds. Sure. Where? <laughs> Any true fan knows that there's only one possible option for a cafe nearby, which is why this line always makes us chuckle even through our sobs. Number 11, Moo Point. All right, Rach, the big question is, does he like you? Right? Because if he doesn't like you, this is all a moo point. Joey shows on a few occasions that he doesn't have a great grasp of the English language, including when he uses a thesaurus on every word of a letter, 
including his signature. And sometimes his misunderstandings actually cause us to question whether what we thought we knew made sense to begin with. When he tries to educate Rachel on what a moo point is, explaining that it's like a cow's opinion in that it doesn't matter, we can't help but feel like it actually adds up. Have I been living with him for too long or did that all just make sense? In a slightly less understandable example, he somehow never learned that an Adam's apple isn't named after every individual man. Would you put that back on? Monica's gonna be here any minute. But it hurts my Joey's apple. <laughs> Okay, for the last time, it's not named after each individual man. Number 10, Inside Out Cat. Rachel does some pretty impulsive things throughout the series, but one of the most notable is when she buys a pricey hairless cat that her friends aren't exactly fond of. Check it out. What, what is what, what the, the hell, hell is that? Everyone has something to say about her new feline friend, whether it's claiming it looks like a hand or asking why it's inside out. It's, it's a cat. That is not a cat. <laughs> yes, it is. Why is it inside out? The real kicker, of course, is when she finally finds someone to take it off her hands, Gunther. Even he doesn't quite understand what he's gotten himself into because he thought it was some kind of snake. Oops. So what is this, some kind of snake or something? <laughs> Number nine, Headless Clowns. We probably could have told you that letting Joey and Chandler look after baby Ben was not gonna go well. He's just adorable. Oh, can you tell him that? Because he thinks he looks too pink. <laughs> they get distracted when talking to some cute girls and end up inadvertently leaving Ben on a city bus. Hey, where's your baby? It turns out they weren't the only ones to lose a baby that day, and they have to pick between two infants, one of whom is wearing an outfit covered in clowns, while the other is sporting ducks. We'll flip for it. Ducks or clowns? Oh, we're gonna flip for the baby? You got a better idea? All right, call it in here. <laughs> they decide to flip a coin to decide, and Joey says the ducks should be heads, because ducks have heads. Chandler's response to this logic is one for the books. Kind of scary-ass clowns came to your birthday. <laughs> Number eight, they don't know. Monica and Chandler's secret relationship is a plot point for much of the show's fifth season, and it all comes to a head in this episode where everyone gradually finds out what's been going on between them. But see, they don't know that we know that they know. <laughs> so... Ah, uh, yes. The messers become the messies. <laughs> the other friends are let in on the secret one by one, and eventually they're just hiding it from Ross. Yeah, listen, Joey's not gonna be here tonight, so why don't you come over and I'll let you uh, feel my bicep. <laughs> or maybe more. But the lengths at which they go to mess with one another in an attempt to hold on to the secret a little longer is hilarious. Especially when Phoebe uses this flawless logic that is super easy to understand. They thought that they could mess with us? Uh, They're trying to mess with us? <laughs> don't know that we know they know we know. <laughs> Number seven, Ross's leather pants. Ross is wearing leather pants. <laughs> Does nobody else see that Ross is wearing leather pants? Someone comment on the pants. Poor Ross always seems to have something bad happen to him. For New Year's, Ross makes a resolution to do one new thing every day. One of those things ends up being wearing leather pants, which turns into an abject calamity. <laughs> he wears them on a date, but when he goes to the bathroom, he can't get them back up again. Things keep getting worse and worse as he tries different tactics to eliminate the moisture from his legs. I, I see lotion. I have lotion. Will that work? Yeah, sure. Throw some of that on there. While Joey tries to offer him advice, it doesn't make things any better. You okay? They're still, they're still not coming on, man, and the lotion and the powder have made a paste. Number six, Phoebe's play. God, isn't this exciting? I earned this. I wiped tables for it, I steamed milk for it, and it was totally not worth it. In season one, Rachel gets depressed about her financial situation, after she receives her first paycheck and realizes how much she loses to taxes. While Phoebe and Monica try to cheer her up, they instead end up catching some of her despair. I'm so sorry, you guys. 
I didn't mean to bring you down. No, you were right. I don't have a plan. <laughs> Monica worries that she doesn't have a life plan, and when she asks Phoebe if she has one, she has the perfect response. Do you have a plan? I don't even have a plan. <laughs> we can definitely all relate to the idea of not knowing what we're doing with our lives, and Phoebe is all of us in this scene. Number 5. Joey wearing all Chandler's clothes. No one was ready for this joke. Here we find Ross trying to get everyone out of the apartment on time to attend his event, but all his buddies are slowing him down in their own way. Okay, peeps, quick, which shoes should I wear? The black or the purple? purple. Just, just, just pick one, okay? Oh, okay, okay, the black. But oh, do you have the black with like little strappies? Joey and Chandler end up in a feud over who lays claim over the best spot in the living room, and it escalates quickly. So, in the words of A.A. A. Milne, get out of my chair, dill hole. <laughs> okay. What are you doing? Well, you said I had to give you the chair. You didn't see anything about the cushions. The highlight is when Joey decides to put on all of Chandler's clothes and impersonates him, all while doing lunges. Yeah. I'll tell you, it's hot with all this stuff on. I, uh, I better not do any, I don't know, lunges. <laughs> Number four, Rachel's trifle. Look at it, isn't it beautiful? Yeah, yeah, what is it? Rachel isn't exactly a master chef, and this is shown on several occasions throughout the series. No moment is more memorable, however, than when she attempts to make a traditional English trifle for Thanksgiving. Unfortunately, or fortunately if you're Joey, the pages of her cookbook get stuck together and she ends up making a meal that's part trifle and part shepherd's pie. Yeah, it'll be like a funny Thanksgiving story. <laughs> Vomiting stories are funny, I guess. The result is an absolute disaster, and her friends all come up with creative ways to dispose of their portions to avoid hurting her feelings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is so good that I'm gonna go enjoy it on the balcony. I can enjoy the view whilst I enjoy my dessert. Except Joey, of course, who is a big fan and eats the entire thing. Are you kidding? What's not to like? Custard? Good. Jam? Good. Meat? Good. <laughs> Number three, Joey on Pyramid. Joey Tribbiani appearing on a televised game show. Oh boy, what could go wrong? So, I know it can be intimidating for regular people to be around celebrities, but relax, I'm just like you. Only better looking and richer. When Monica announces that he'll be going on Pyramid, we all had a feeling how it would go, but no one would have expected how hilarious he would be. Uh, okay, it's a store like a supermarket. Oh, I see, I see what I did there. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'm writing in my... Diary. No, more like a notebook. Damn it! His appearance as the celebrity guest on this game show is absolutely priceless, mostly because he's so utterly bad at the game and his partner gets increasingly frustrated with him. Go. You put this in your coffee. Uh, a spoon. Your hands. Your face. <laughs> it's white. Paper. Snow. A ghost. Whether he's unintentionally giving away the answers or trying to get them right, we still find ourselves yelling, paper, snow, a ghost, whenever the mood strikes us. Monica and Ross's storyline in the same episode is just as hilarious, as they find out that they inadvertently kissed when they were younger. Well, then who was on my bed? Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> no, no, no! Number two, the game. Many consider this episode to be the absolute pinnacle of Friends because it encompasses so many elements of what makes the show great. While it consists mostly of the gang, minus Phoebe, hanging out at the apartment together, it also includes an unforgettable competition between the guys and the girls. What is Monica's biggest pet peeve? Animals dressed as humans. That's correct. <laughs> and while they're playing, we learn some hilarious facts about each of them. What is the name of Chandler's father's Las Vegas all-male burlesque? Viva Las Vegas! <laughs> Unfortunately, that is correct. Yes! <laughs> As viewers, we didn't think there was any way the girls would actually lose their apartment, so it's all the more shocking and funny when they do, especially during the game's final moments when Rachel doesn't actually know what Chandler does for a living. 
But does anyone? Um, it has something to do with trans bonding. Oh, 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 he's a trans monster! Trans monster! <laughs> That's not even a word! <laughs> oh, no, 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 I, I can get this! I can get this! Oh, no! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Pivot Returning to the theme of everything bad happening to Ross, when he decides to buy a new couch, he refuses to pay for delivery, assuring everyone that he can handle moving it himself. With a little help from his friends, of course. All right, Rich, come on, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? When he and Rachel aren't able to get the couch through the building staircase, they bring in Chandler for extra support. Oh, here we go, pivot! Pivot! Ross screams at them to pivot over and over again, even though it's clearly not helping. Eventually, Chandler loses his cool with this frustrated response. Paper! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> okay, I, I don't think it's gonna pivot anymore. You think? Well, at least Ross has his store credit. Look, I'm a reasonable man. I will accept store credit. <laughs> I'll give you store credit in the amount of four dollars. <laughs> I will take it. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.